think people ask me, what are, what are you proudest of? And I think looking back, it's putting ethics, putting ethos and nature as, as model, mm -hmm. which is the emulate piece where we work with designers and engineers. And now we're working in social innovation, you know, working with companies and helping them create collaboration models based on the natural world. That's that nature as model. The thing that we did to make sure that it was deep biomimicry was that we also included nature as measure. That became the, you know, the standard. We took our standards from the natural world and nature as mentor. And so there was this continuing like teach people how to reconnect. When I say that, I'm talking, it's a, re it's a remedial practice for Western industrial culture. Indigenous peoples have been doing this for a very, very long time. Yes. Their flow structure was not disconnected, right? And ours, ours we, we dismembered and now we're remembering. Mm. And we're trying, that's the reconnect piece. So we have these three pieces in biomimicry, you know, the emulate, the reconnect. And then the ethos was, you know, the, the, the understanding that we're a very young species, <laughs> toddlers with matches, smart, big brains on those toddlers, but we wanted some, we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to fall in and make the same mistakes, mm -hmm. right? And, and have this gold rushed biomimicry without, without any ethos. So where we look for ethics in the natural world is the natural world, right? We look at what are the common patterns? And that became, that was life's principles. Mm -hmm. So life's principles are these common patterns. What do, what do we see over and over again in the natural world? And they're, you know, they're big things like, you know, cultivating cooperative relationships and, you know, and doing chemistry and life-friendly conditions. They're actually quite ambitious. And then we use them as the filter of whether or not our designs were truly biomimetic. Mm -hmm. Having that as the aspiration and the evaluation is so important. It gives us a framework. But what I love that you're also touching on here is the importance of context and how biomimicry as a perspective is it's giving you the tools to ask the right kinds of questions. And there's this beautiful humility that comes out of it that says, you don't have to have all the answers. You just have to know how to ask the right kinds of questions. And I know we were, you know, we're talking about nature as model, nature as measure, nature as mentor. I'd, I'd love to go back to be the beginning before you were able to incorporate measure and mentor. What did nature as model mean at the beginning? And then how did it kind of evolve into getting, how did you start to see that, that flow of how we needed to think a little bit bigger beyond? Yeah, well, you know, when you, you put yourself back 25 years in a nascent uh, sustainability movement, right? Where people were basically just saying, let's just make the building airtight so that we can reduce energy use. That was the, that was, that was what good design was at that point. And that was really wild, crazy green design. This is before there was fair trade. I mean, just think about where the movement, the environmental and sustainability movement was. I think the first, it was a triage. The first thing was let's get nature's models of chemistry, efficient drag reduction. Let's, let's teach people how to shave material use, sip energy, and get toxins out of our products. I mean, there was this, and there still is. I mean, none of this goes away. It's not like you do this sequential thing. You, you, just, you just bring in these different flow, flows, right? Mm -hmm. as, as the world is ready for them, frankly. If we had come in and said, you, nature needs to be your mentor, you meet people where they are. And where they are is they're, they, they're realizing that they're starting to get some environmental regulations, the, the things that were passed in the 70s are starting to catch up with them. The Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act. There wasn't director of sustainability in that at that time. You know, we were working in the R&D labs. And so that's, that's where that started. And as we started with nature as model and you moved into this concept of nature as measure and this idea of generous design, I'm oh, yeah. curious now how you're seeing that now fold into this kind of research and, and are people embodying that as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I had a quote from Vaclav Havel, who was the president of Czechoslovakia. 
And he said, we should take our standards from the natural world. That's how I opened the book. It's really interesting. And so nature as measure was really, in, really important to me. And that should be what we aspire to because we are nature. You know, um, we're young and we're, we're kind of maladapted right now, but to be well adapted is to sort of see that as your reference. Mm. You want it that you really want, you, you look up to, that's your mentor that you want to become. You have a city or a building or a factory, uh, factory is for us, that's the term. Um, and you basically look at the ecosystem that would be there if you weren't there and you take your standards from that. We measure it and we look at how much water is being stored, how much soil is being built, how much nutrients cycled, wildlife supported, carbon sequestered, right? Not just energy, but all of these e ecological benefits that are happening right next door. And we say, can we do that with our building and our site? Well, that's an aspirational goal. That's nature as measure because it's local. So if you're doing it in Phoenix, it's gonna be very different. You're gonna go out to the Saguaro cactus and you're gonna be, you know, that, that ecosystem and go, wow, look at how they're using water, storing water, right? So then what you do is once you have those metrics, you do go out into those places. If you're in a, a tropical rainforest area, you go and you say, how is this system purging itself of water after very heavy rains? And you put that into your um, to your building design. And again, it's about flows. Mm -hmm. You are hoping that just like a natural ecosystem, out comes these beneficial flows for free to me, right? And the toddler would just take them. But as we now grow up as a species, what do we give back?